that is ripe once we consume it, it, it provides very uh, necessary nourishment for our digestive system. Uh, let's say uh, the, um, I just am gonna give you an example uh, how this works in terms of this threefoldness of human organization. If we wanna nourish our head, we would uh, give uh, minerals or the foods that are rich in minerals would be root vegetables like carrots, beets, uh, parsnips. And then if we wanna strengthen the, the middle, this part of the, our, organiz our organization, the chest, uh, the heart, uh, blood vessels, blood, we would eat uh, uh, the foods, grains, grains that contain that goodness uh, because they relate it to that part in us. And so we can, with this knowledge, we can actually approach nutrition with, a, uh, with intelligence and effectiveness that uh, we will have as a result of understanding. So um, then um, the third important topic to discuss uh, would be uh, natural remedies uh, that can be used uh, in the process of uh, optimizing health. Uh, as you know, there's uh, uh, most of the medications that are produced in by pharmaceutical industries uh, chemical substances, uh, synthetic substances, they usually, as a rule, are not from the normal uh, natural environment, although there are some, uh, but most of them are synthetic. So, and they work on the target organs or uh, uh, specific receptors and tissues and cells. And so uh, that's the approach, I'm gonna dare to say it, of allopathic medicine, if it makes any sense. Allopathic, it's, uh, it's the really Western medical approach that is uh, trying to uh, address the symptoms rather uh, in a combative way to, to resist and to, you know, to suppress the symptom, suppress the process. With, uh, there is another way uh, to approach is homeopathic way, or meaning that we do not uh, it's the, the principle is the support the process through similar process. Uh, I know it sounds complicated. <laughs> but instead of combating, let's say we have a morbid process, but instead of you know, combating and trying to suppress it, we find a way to, to go along with that, but direct it in a way that it would resolve itself by using uh, the the energies and forces within the human organism. So that's the big difference. So in this regard, natural remedies are really working this way to go along and help the body to strengthen itself. In that way, the undesirable the ailment or mor morbidity will be dealt with uh, effectively but harmoniously without without really trying to suppress it and drive it deeper in, not to really heal, but to hide, I'd say. So natural remedies could be, could be also, there's, a, there's many. Right now, there's a big market, and it's important to realize it. We need a certain way to understand what works and what doesn't, because you know, in the market, there's a lot of, a lot of remedies, a lot of medications that uh, we need to, we needed to select what's, what would be effective. Uh, so homeopathic remedies work, and I, that's what I use in my, in my work. Homeopathic remedies work alone with the process. So you, uh, you don't fight uh, the morbidity. And, uh, and yet, uh, it's, it can be very effective in many cases. Now, other, uh, there are other group of remedies, so-called biological remedies, too. Uh, it's, they work similarly with these natural remedies, like homeopathic remedies, but uh, they have a sort of a different effect, and maybe the, the, the dose is uh, more substantial than homeopathic remedies, and, uh, uh, and so forth. I don't want to, again, I don't want to overwhelm you with the, too much information. Basically, what's important to bring to your attention is that 
what I'm trying to do is to provide services for people with um, uh, ailments, many various ailments, uh, uh, for example, uh, disorders of digestive process, respiratory, mental, emotional, depression, anxiety, uh, uh, dermatologic conditions, uh, skin, pro skin issues, and so forth uh, by using this uh, three-prone approach. Uh, is to address the lifestyle and set up healthy rhythms in, a, in, a, in the life of a person. Educate about these things too, because it's very important to interact and, and get the, uh, my client, I don't want to call him patient, uh, get a client involved, actively get interested in the, in the healing process. So it's, there, is a, there is this enthusiasm about this, being involved in this process. Then, uh, of course, uh, nutrition, nutritional advice is, is uh, extremely important in that regard because arranging and creating a proper diet uh, for uh, a specific person, it's like a, a very individualized approach. And uh, because for every person, uh, nutrition can be arranged in a way that it would be healing. It would actually work as a, as a medicine by itself if it's properly done. And so that's second. That was second important uh, approach. And the natural remedies I use um, homeopathic remedies mostly. Uh, to uh, that's in cases when a person needs to to receive uh, the remedy and. Um, that works alone with this, with this morbid process and will facilitate a positive outcome uh, in cases when the remedies are required. Not always they are required, but in most cases we can derive a great benefit from the remedi remedial treatment. And so uh, to uh, conclude my presentation and open up a space for some questions, I'd like to say Although I call myself a doctor, I'm in fact not a licensed doctor in the United States, although I was a doctor in Ukraine. I did come here and I passed all the boards, medical uh, examinations for the United States. And uh, so uh, academically, uh, I understand and I um, have a good grip on concepts and whatever comes to health. Uh, however, I do not provide any diagnosis, will not change any diagnosis, or interfere with med existing medical uh, management. I can provide, what I do, I provide advice and uh, recommendation. And then my client uh, would decide what to do. Uh, I am, though, uh, qualified and certified in homeopathy, and I've been working in this uh, field for quite a long time in many states in the United States and also in Europe. And now, <clears throat> if you have any questions, please. Pat, hold on. Pat, do I hit the mute button? Uh, okay, oh, there I am. <laughs> Scared myself. Um, I'm a client of, of Dr. Sergey's, and I started with him in the spring. Um, I have taken zero allergy meds this year, and I thought, I, I didn't think anything of it until I saw these people coming in to my practice and to people I interact with going, oh my gosh, my allergies are horrible this year, so yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm allergic to Oli right now. I live right by the Oli farm complex, and as you see, I am completely yeah. allergic to every animal on the face of the planet. I really am. But um, that's what I'm having right now. But where is your office located? It's Sinking Spring on Penn Avenue. Oh, it's on if Penn Avenue. If you know this okay. toll, uh, toll House Plaza, uh -huh. it's yes. right there, Suite 8. Okay. All right. Yes. All right. Thank if, you. Yeah. Um, do you use um, CBD for one of your treatments or? No. You I do not? No. You do not at all? You don't recommend CBD at all? No. 
I've been taking that for like, um, I don't know. See, I, I cannot, I mean, I don't have experience with it. I'm just not using it. Okay. Yeah, okay. I mean, I cannot say I have an opinion about that of my own because I'm just, in my, in my work, I don't use it. Okay. Uh, but I, it's not, I'm not saying I'm against using it. By all means, if it works for you, of course, yes. Okay, all right. But, mm -hmm. Well, I'm interested in finding out more things about you know, homeopathic health and, and what things work and what, mm -hmm. what doesn't. May I ask you, are you on, uh, currently on uh, regular medications for allergies? None at all. Have you taken before? Um, Allergy medication? The only thing that works for me is Benadryl. Benadryl. That is the only thing that suppresses mm -hmm. my histamine response, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm reacting to all the animals from the Oli Fair because mm -hmm. I'm right there, and it was just a dust. All of Oli is like a dust, mm -hmm. is completely a dust cloud right now. <laughs> it's horrible. So yeah, that's why I'm reacting. So I'm, I'm going to take some Benadryl because I have mm -hmm. some things I got to do this afternoon. <laughs> well, I'd be happy to help you. <laughs> yeah, but, I'll, I will definitely look, look you up, so. Okay. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Uh, I'm here kind of on behalf of my wife who's under the weather right now. Mm -hmm. uh, she typically, any time from now until like early December, which is when her birthday is, she always says she gets sick for her birthday, and it's not because she's a year older. But um, I, I think she has she gets like real bad sinus infections, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is mainly due to trees, grasses, that type of mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. in fall. Seasonal. Uh, mm -hmm. She's allergic to like penicillin, so when the leaves drop mm -hmm. and they start kind of rotting, you, mm -hmm. you know, mold, she's allergic to mold. So I believe similar to maybe what Corinna has gone through, um, she's looking for something to help her combat this mm -hmm. annual uh, is, has your wife tried any treatment? I'm sure most uh, likely she did, huh? Mainly just allergy meds, like the other woman mm -hmm. said, something similar to Benadryl, uh, cough suppressants, mm -hmm. that type of thing. Okay. Uh, would you think your wife would be interested in seeing me? Okay. Okay. Anyone, Anyone else? else? Please. Hi. Um, first, thank you for being here today. We appreciate hearing everything you. you have to say. Mm -hmm. um, and Chu, do you have a, any type of a book or articles that you could point us to that maybe you've written or um, any type of literature that you recommend? Uh, there is a um, monthly newsletter on different subjects that I've been doing uh, since last year. Uh, I, had, I have two websites. One is dedicated to uh, mostly adults, uh, or the, the one is on, on my business card. But there's also the website dedicated to children's, uh, children's destinies. Uh, that's called childrensdestinies.org, and that's about. Uh, um, challenges that children face in this uh, in this uh, modern culture uh, and environment. So there's some material there you can find it. Uh, in my car, there are two web these websites are listed. But yes, uh, I think I should get busier with uh, producing uh, edu some educational material. But if you're interested, I can forward uh, the newsletters that I've. Uh, that I've produced um, since last year, because they cover a lot of uh, useful subjects, in term, in, including uh, the uh, the theoretical part of this, well, let's say, theory behind this approach and the practical application. Would you be interested in that? Yeah. 
Um, maybe you can leave your information, email, name, so I will forward this. And whoever else is interested, please uh, put your information down. I'll be, I'll be happy to put you in my uh, mailing list and then uh, uh, answer your questions. Maybe you have any specific questions in, regarding your health, I'd be, I'd be able to provide you some kind of background information on that. Yes, of course. I had another question, if that's okay. Yes, please. Um, have you treated anyone with fibromyalgia? Uh, Is, or widespread um, inflammation and pain? Uh, no, I have not had a patient with fibromyalgia that I've, uh, I've been approached. I haven't been approached with that. Nothing yet? Okay. Uh, however, there are ways to deal with this uh, in terms of holistic with this approach. There's ways. I know it's a challenging condition, and uh, usually women suffer from that more so than men. And uh, it's, in fact, a systemic condition, it's, uh, and it uh, can present in many ways. Uh, so, I'm just going to say the truth, tell you the truth. I haven't dealt with a patient who approached me, but I'd be, if you're interested, we can look into that and uh, try a solution for your issue. Okay. I know there is a big debate whether fibromyalgia actually is something that actually exists. Like, I know a lot of yeah. medical doctors believe, you know, believe that it's not, yeah. they, they just kind of, nah, there's no such thing as fibromyalgia. Right. But, um, I believe there is, and my mother and I, I believe, well, we, by an RA doctor, we've both been diagnosed with fibromyalgia. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's just like widespread pain. Just, you never know where it's going to be, where it's coming up next, but it, yeah, it's just there. Um, so, so, but I would be interested in seeing what, what yes. your thoughts on that subject would be. Yes, I mean, we can definitely look into that together. Okay. And, uh, and I know, yes, it's the same thing with autism. They, some, some doctors and some say that autism doesn't exist as a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. is, there's no clear-cut criteria for that. And so many even deny that. They say there's no such thing, but it's, you know, this is very vague. But yeah, fibromyalgia is a is a challenging issue to deal with because it can present in many various ways, very vague, and it can uh, flare up, and then mm -hmm. it subsides, and then, uh, and then it can also present as headaches, uh, chronic fatigue, and uh, yes. issues. But I would say my take on this, this is a systemic condition of some kind of a, um, autoimmune I would say autoimmune yes. process yes. that uh, mm -hmm. that is uh, a truly difficult pinpoint. You need to really look into the entire picture. By the way, I, I, I would like to say that there is the process or the the uh, approach that I'm practicing involves so-called biographic diagnostic method, meaning that would take I would take the entire uh, history of a, a client. Uh, and assess it from that point of view, from the beginning of you know, birth until the present moment of time, then this approach gives a really good opportunity to take it completely in, into attention, mm -hmm. my, my attention uh, span, and understand the entire, entire situation. Because if we just take it, take it like that on a symptomatic level without trying to dig, dig deeper and understand it on a biographic level, then we're probably going to see this much out of the entire picture that we'll never be able to understand the issue. So that's what I actually use. Okay. And uh, there, could be a, uh, there could be a solution to your problem. And I have noticed one thing. Um, after taking CBD, that that is actually one of the things that seems to help yeah. with the widespread inflammation. Because when I first started, you know, really feeling badly with fibromyalgia, it was about 10 years ago, and I would have headaches every day. Mm -hmm. I had taken, started taking CBD from um, the advice of another holistic healthcare practitioner. Mm -hmm. And um, he told me, you know, start on the CBD and see how you feel. Well, within a month, my headaches were gone, and I have barely had a headache since that time. So I don't know. 
Yeah, I don't well, know. Uh, you know, I try the, my own little thing because I am not a medical doctor in any way, shape, or form, <laughs> or well, holistic. Yes. I just try my little things, and some things work, and some things don't. So. Well, you see, this substance that the humans used for a long time, uh, and then they became problematic during our time just recently, and now they uh, again coming up. Uh, surfacing now as, as uh, therapeutic measures or remedies. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a benefit. It's, it has a soothing effect, of course, but uh, do you want to rely on that? Uh, it, it's probably, it's, it does the job, but you might be dealing with this something deeper underlying. So you, you, it will relieve your symptoms, but if you want to go deeper and understand and try to deal with that, with the underlying issue, then I'd say what I, I can provide could be useful, I believe, so yes. I just want to add with Dr. Sergey's paperwork, I have never had a more detailed case history that I had to fill out for paperwork. I, I mean, it's not like one of these things you sit in the office and fill out, he sends it to you, it takes, oh, it took me about a couple of hours and because I had to go back from birth, and I kind of had to go, okay, did I get this, this, what happened here? Um, so it is very detailed, and then after you see Dr. Sergey, he uh, goes home and looks at your case history, and he gets back to you and says, okay, this is where we want to go. So um, I am very, very impressed and pleased with the, you know, the level of detail that he does go into. So. Yes, thank you very much, Clorinda, for the, your endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just don't want people thinking they're filling out a form in five minutes, and it's like, yeah. no, no, there's a lot of paperwork here. Uh, I think Pasta has a question. <laughs> yeah, um, my wife has dealt with a lot of autoimmune stuff in the past. How much would you say, I mean, obviously it varies case to case, but how much does diet play a role, especially in autoimmune diseases? Because we, me and my wife, literally went through a season where we threw away everything in our house, uh -huh. and we went into what she called AIP, autoimmune paleo diet, and we removed everything for six months outside of like meat, some vegetables, it was chaos, and I was angry most of the time. Yeah. Um, and then, when we came back, you're supposed to slowly reintroduce things, but once you reintroduce one thing into your diet, it was like, oh, I want to introduce another one, and right. another one, and another one. So how much do you think, especially in Western culture, diet plays into the way that we're feeling and the diseases yeah. we're carrying around? I think, I think it is it plays a huge role. That's why I made a, uh, a part of my presentation. Nutrition is there playing the very important uh, role. Yeah, diet, especially in autoimmune condition, what it means because digestive process, it's not something like happens by itself. Basically, digestive process, if you want me to say it, it's a miraculous process. We don't know how that happens because it's so elaborate. And it's, it has to do with what happens. We consume substance that is not us. It's foreign to us. And we have to be able to make it our own through this digestive process, through taking in and assimilating that substance. And then if a person with autoimmune condition has problems with foods, that's naturally so because there is not enough force within a human being, with a person, to deal with the outside world. So in, in, in order to incorporate it, make, you see this has, has to do with the uh, a, a force of digestive process, which is basically a human will, is, is, is working there, right there, in that digestive process. So yes, there is a direct relationship between uh, diet or nu nu nutrition in autoimmune condition, and you have to be very selective uh, about um, creating a diet for a person like that who suffers from that. And then maybe even think about a therapeutic effect of a, a diet because there is a way to strengthen uh, digestive process by selecting certain foods. 
Yes, there is a connection right there. So, um, does it answer your question? Well, see, they, yeah, I know it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of a, uh, they, they call this food inflammatory. It's, it's a modern, I would, what's the, uh, it's a going term these days. It's like all of a sudden these foods that we consume for so long, like milk. Milk used to be, you know, very nice. Now in the milk dairy products, uh, uh, excluded or reduced uh, sugars or sweets, you know, sugars, fruit, the fructose and, and fruits, natural, there's also considered, you can, I can go on and on. You, it's like a, a forest uh, where you, not, not going to be easy to find that little uh, flower you're looking for because there's too many factors. But um, there is a lot about nutrition and how, what substance and how they affect us. So yes, I I can actually uh, educate on that or present my view on that, uh, and so uh, it's actually something I'd like to offer uh, as a as educational not a program but maybe educational event or educational material for people on nutrition because yes it's extremely important. Anyone else? I promise this will be my last question. Um, but if you would have, um, would you be able to recommend one good practice that someone should do every day? If you could say one thing that we should all be doing every day See, in it's, general. Well, it has to be done individually, depending on the specific person, because uh, we are not the same. So yeah, I can, I can give a, a practice, but it's not going to be for everyone. I'll have to talk to you, ma'am, directly, understand your situation, understand, well, first of all, what you need, how can I help, how I can help you, and consider your overall structure, makeup. That's the idea that is behind the biographic diagnostic method. And we need to understand, because people are very different. Your process is very different from a process in front of, uh, you know, anyone else, let's say. And then, uh, yeah, I could do it, but it will be done individually as a result of consultation and proper assessment. Anyone else? Well, I should probably say a little something. <laughs> I'm lucky enough to be married to the good doctor. <laughs> and, uh, Alan Walton, and, um, my wife. Yeah. <laughs> and um, he's treated a number of things for me over the years, um, but specifically the two outstanding things. One is that um, I get edema, like my legs and ankles swell up, and so he has me on two remedies that have, they work with each other, and it's really effective, and I've been able to cut down on those diuretics which of course, when you work all day and you have to go to the bathroom four or five times, like every half hour, it's a big pain. But these have been really effective remedies for me. Uh, second thing is I you know, had the pleasure of living abroad in India for many years teaching. And while I was there, I got a synovial cyst in my spine. So that's just like a fluid, benign, it's a benign kind of thing, but it made it so that I couldn't walk. Um, and he sent remedies, and within, oh, I think within a week to two weeks, I was walking again, and within three months, the pain was gone. Uh, fortunately, we have before and after MRIs to prove that it went from this big down to like a pinhead size, so, and I've been really pretty pain-free since, so. Every once in a while, you know, kicks up, but I also have a really good chiropractor. <laughs> so, yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, for a number of issues, 
it's really worked for me. And I've done, before I even knew Sergei, I was doing homeopathy. My grandfather did homeopathy. I had taken very little medicine in my life, and it just worked for me. Now, in places like India, you walk into a hospital, and there's allopathic medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, and homeopathic medicine, all in the same hospital. And the doctors talk to each other. And in a lot of European countries, cancer treatment, by the way, um, also very effective homeopathic and um, other forms of medicine that are effective to use during allopathic treatments and or instead of certain allopathic treatments, but um, certainly to help the good guys, you know, whereas the medicine tends to kill the good guys and the bad guys. So um, I'm just saying it's very much practiced as a complementary medicine in most of the rest of the world. It's just here it's become sort of, you know. Yeah, it's another. Woo-woo woo, woo medicine, yeah. thank you, Clarissa. It's, it's I, if I, if I can add something to that, not much. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a. Uh, uh, there's a history of homeopathy in the United States, and uh, there's a history of suppressing homeopathy in the United States too, and uh, for some specific reasons. Mainly, it's the market business control. Who who runs, who does what? Uh, and please don't un misunderstand me. I'm not advocating against n normal Western medicine. It's useful and it's indispensable in many cases because uh, you need, a, if you have a trauma or some kind of surgical emergency, you need to go to the hospital and then you, uh, you need to get proper care. In many cases, it's very effective. It's, I'm not saying it has its place, but I'm, tr I'm offering an alternative and a healthy one. Uh, well, because I, my opinion is that the weakness of modern Western medical approach is that it doesn't understand the depth. It doesn't even try to get it to, into the depth of the pathology um, in the human being. And because basically, it's very time. To be honest, it's a time-consuming process. If you want to really get deep down, it's going to take time and effort, and. Uh, it's not enough time. You need to process people. You know that's that's what I'm going to say. But I'm not dismissing the importance of the Western medical medicine as such. So here we are. <laughs> Anyone else, please? So. If no one else has any questions, yes, I do have an office in Sinking Spring and this Toll House Plaza. And if you're interested, please uh, find me and get in touch. And if you leave your information, I will forward the whatever newsletters I've produced by now. And we will receive them in the future as well. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.